everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Taylor, if you are new here, um, and today I am going to talk to you guys about and tell y'all about my birth story. Um, I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible, but I know it's gonna be a long video, um, so buckle in, get yourself something to drink. I've got water, my big cup of water, which is going to be featured in my postpartum must-haves, um, so stay tuned for that video. But let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have a five month old little boy. Um, I know I'm filming this video five months after um, I had him, but I remember the day like it was yesterday. Um, so we're just gonna kind of jump in. Um, <clears throat> starting at about 36, I was like 36 and three or four days pregnant. Um, I went in, had my normal ultrasound that they do, my doctor does at 36 weeks, um, and my fluid was at a five. And if it gets to a four, they usually induce if you're past 37 weeks pregnant. Um, so I was not past 37 weeks pregnant when my fluid did dip to a four. Um, and so I did have to stay the night in the hospital. Now this was, I live in Texas, it was August, and I was nine months pregnant. I was huge miserable um so i was i guess a little dehydrated i didn't think i was um because i was drinking a lot of water but apparently it just wasn't enough um so i stayed in the hospital overnight um and had to get fluids really pumped in me um and then the next morning they checked and my fluid went up to an eight um so i went home all was great i then had to get ultrasounds every single week until I had the baby to check my fluid to make sure that it was not dropping again. Um, so we were in the clear, fluid went up to an eight. I go to my next doctor's appointment um, and I went about a week and a half, totally fine. Um, I go to my next doctor's appointment, it was on a Thursday and my blood pressure had skyrocketed. Um, not sure why, I've never had high blood pressure in my life, but she let me know it's right under the you know, level of when they induce. So if it gets up to that um, that blood pressure, then she will have to induce me. So I had to come back the next Tuesday again to get another ultrasound to make sure that my fluid was right. Um, and then, you know, they just check your blood pressure there anyway. Um, so they checked my blood pressure. It did go up to what she said would be the induction. So she scheduled the induction for the next day. So the induction would be on a Wednesday. Um, that was September. Wednesday would be September 4th. Um, and my... With the induction, since my blood pressure had gone so high, she wanted, this was a Tuesday, she wanted to schedule it for the next Wednesday. Um, so we go in that next Wednesday, we had to go in a little later than scheduled because they did not have enough um, beds and enough rooms. Um, so we went in at like 11 a.m. and they let me know they wanted to, instead of starting the Pitocin right away and starting the induction right away, they wanted to wait until 6 to 8 a.m because they didn't want me to have to give birth in the middle of the night. Um, so they did, we got there about 11, the nurse, after I you know, got settled and in my gown, the nurses kind of came in and started doing the IVs and um, they had to get in contact with my doctor for my doctor to give those orders that we would wait until 6 a.m. Um, so by that time it was about noon and they let me know that they were going to give me some IV fluids and let me eat lunch, my last meal uh, before birth. And then um, they were going to give me Cytotex. So I am not a medical professional, but from my understanding, it's like a little bitty pill they inserted vaginally to kind of help thin my cervix um, to really kind of start the process. So they gave it to me at 4 p.m. That was the only one, sorry. That is the only one that they gave me. Um, and from there, um, I mean, it, they're supposed, they said that like they can cause some, not really contractions, some cramping, mild, mild, mild contractions. I did experience a little bit of cramping, nothing painful though. Um, and then the next morning at 6 a.m. is when they started the Pitocin. So this is where things get good. Let me preface this by saying um, the entire pregnancy, I am 95% sure um, he was head down the whole time. He was head down at the 20 week ultrasound, the um, 32, 36, and every week after that, he was head down. Um, when she started measuring my cervix at 36 weeks, I was like one centimeter dilated and like 60% effaced. 
Um, I was like two centimeters dilated by the time I went into the hospital. Um, so I already had a little bit of, you know, a little, I was already kind of starting. I was already had a head start. That's what I was trying to say. I've already kind of had a head start with him head down, um, and was already somewhat, um, I was head down and I was already somewhat dilated. So that's where, um, I think played a big role in how quickly things moved for me because I know a lot of times with inductions, some women can be induced and be in labor for 12, 15, 24 hours sometimes. That wasn't the case for me. Um, so we, she came in, started Pitocin at 6 a.m. This was on February, February. This was on September 5th. Um, they started Pitocin at 6 a.m. My doctor came in at 7 a.m. and broke my water. My nurse let me know that usually after your water breaks um, is when the um, the contractions really kind of start to get going and they get more and more painful. Um, so if I was going to get an epidural, then now once I get through an IV bag of fluids, then they can go ahead and call for the epidural. I let her know that's what I'm doing. Not a chance that I was even going to try to do this without an epidural. Give me all the medicine. So um, I finished the IV bag of fluids. She called the anesthesiologist. So by the time my water was broken, they called the anesthesiologist. I had gone through um, my whole IV bag of fluids. This was between 10 and 11, like 10.30 a.m. Um, thank God my hospital allowed my husband to stay in the room. I know there's a lot of hospitals that don't allow that. Um, they want you in there alone. So he got to stay in the room with me and I had to sit up and kind of like bend over like this and like hug my knees pretty much. And my husband got to be right in front of me. Um, I'm not afraid of needles. I'm not afraid of shots. I'm good with them. Um, but I had heard so many horror stories that I was terrified of getting the epidural. Um, thank God my the process was very easy, pretty much painless. Um, the shot that goes in your back to kind of numb the area was probably the most painful part. There was one time while he was kind of adjusting everything that I felt a sharp pain go right down my left leg and shoot right back up. Um, I told him about it, he adjusted it, taped my back. So this was not just a shot. I thought that it was just a shot and that it could wear off, but it's like a constant drip. Um, so they have to put like a catheter. I'm not a medical professional. <laughs> um, they had to put like a catheter in my back and he tapes my entire back um, and it was easy. And within like 20, 25 minutes, um, I started to feel the pain relief. Uh, now the contractions I experienced, my water was, was broken at seven. So I did experience contractions for about three hours. I wouldn't, I would say on a scale of one to 10, they were maybe like a six or a seven. So I know that they would have gotten a whole lot worse if I didn't have the epidural. So they were kind of painful, but nothing that I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm miserable. You know, like when they came, they were painful, but I mean, I survived. Um, and I have the pain tolerance of a two-year-old, for real. I have the lowest pain tolerance. Um, so by that time, it was between like 10 and 11. He left um, about 11. And I, I think at that point, I was a five. And I was like 60 percent faced, I believe. Um, 60, 70, something like that. Um, by noon, she came in and I was like at a six and a six or a seven and I could feel pressure down there um but it was like it would come and go it wasn't constant um and so she let me know once it's constant to let her know and that's when she believes I'll be a 10 she'll check me we'll call the doctor we'll get going um so at about one o'clock I called her and told her the pressure is pretty constant again it's not painful but it's constant so you can just feel it literally felt like he was gonna slip right out if only it was that easy. <laughs> um, but she checked, I was at a 10. So I went from about a two to a 10, a two at 6 a.m. to a 10 by one. So things did move fairly quickly. Um, in that time while we were kind of, you know, waiting for me to dilate more and more, um, they did have me put a medicine, is that, uh, no, a peanut ball, a peanut ball in between my legs and kind of go from side to side to kind of help turn the baby the way that he needed to be. Um, and that worked, so that was great. So at about one o'clock, um, they called my doctor, let her know I was at a 10. Her office is like 
five minutes from the hospital. So she got there very quickly. Um, and I was doing some practice pushing. I was aware, um, I know for a lot of first time moms, um, you push, some of them push for an hour, two hours. Um, so I knew that, you know, I was almost done, but I, you know, had to finish strong. And I was, I only had to push, I started pushing about 130, 140. Um, and I only had to push about 30 minutes. Baby was delivered at 2.10 PM that same day. So things moved fairly quickly for me. Um, as far as the epidural, it didn't wear off. It was great. I really didn't feel anything. So as soon as he came out at 2.10 PM, they took him straight. Okay, sorry, someone came to the door, dog started barking. Um, where was I? So, oh, so he came at 2.10 PM. They took him over to the heater. Um, they put him on me first and kind of rubbed him off and everything. Um, and then they moved him over to the heater where they, you know, did his vitamin K shot and, you know, weighed him, measured him, kind of wiped him off a little more, put on his little bonnet, put a diaper, all of that. Bonnet, is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> um, so they did that. My husband went over there while my doctor was kind of stitching me up and, you know, taking care of me. And then, then they brought him to me. Now, this is something that I didn't know at the time, and I'm still not 100% sure that this is what it is, but this is what I think it is. Um, and no one told me it was normal, so it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Um, so after they did that, I guess as my epidural was wearing off, um, I started to have the shakes. My whole body was shaking from head to toe, shaking. My jaw was shaking. I could hardly talk because it was just, uh, it was, it was so scary to me. Didn't know that that was normal. Apparently it does happen, but it, I didn't think that that was something that was normal. So I was holding, um, my baby who had just come out and I was so happy. And like my whole body was like shaking that I was worried that I would like hurt him because I, it was like uncontrollable. So they had to come and like bring blankets over me. <clears throat> and as I was holding him and they took my gown off, his head was like here. So the blanket could only go up to here. My shoulders were just freezing. I was shaking. So I gave him over to my husband while they could just cover me up to really help me stop shaking. Um, and that, I mean, it took like probably 10 to 15 minutes for like me to actually like calm down and stop shaking. Um, so my doctor let my nurses know that if my blood pressure gets to a certain point that she does have to give me, I think a magnesium shot. Um, and my nurse told me right away, you do not want the shot. It does not make you feel good. You will feel sick and gross the rest of the day. So you really need to calm down, relax, and try to keep your blood pressure as low as possible. So at that point, uh, my family did come in, which it was my husband's parents and my mom and my stepfather. Um, they came into the room to see the baby. They came up to me and I was, you know, very pale and was just trying to like lay there and stop, like not talk keep my eyes closed, breathe deeply. My poor mother went berserko. She thought there was something like really, really wrong with me. And so um, the nurse had to tell her she's okay. She just has to keep her blood pressure down. Um, so then everyone left. They only stayed about 30 or so minutes. They, I stayed in the postpartum unit, or not postpartum. I stayed in the labor and delivery unit for a little longer as they kept monitoring my blood pressure. My, they would take my blood pressure every three minutes. Like that's how like serious they were about it. Um, and so finally, when it went down a little bit, they moved us over to postpartum. Postpartum unit was wonderful. Um, I got to eat um, and we got to just hang out with the baby. We had wonderful nurses that just came in and really educated us on so much. Um, and then they also just give me tips and just supplies and supplies and supplies on taking care of myself um, downstairs because, oh, excuse me, <laughs> um, on taking care of myself downstairs because it was, I was in a lot of pain as the medicine started to wear off my, um, it was really hard to get in and out of the bed and even just like move. It was a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. Um, and so the supplies and everything that they gave me was awesome and how like they taught me to take care of myself down there, the different, you know, um, ointments and pads and just all this stuff was, it was wonderful. I do want to do a postpartum uh, must haves video and include all of that because it is, I have so much that I'm like, thank God that I had these things and I went and bought even more. Um, so if y'all, if y'all want to see that, definitely stay tuned. Um, so move over to postpartum. Things are fine. So we moved over to postpartum at like five o'clock that day, um, between four and five. 
And from there, we went ahead and um, gave him a bath in the middle of the night. Um, so I stayed in my robe. I thought that I would change immediately, but I was still like bleeding so much and just so uncomfortable. And I could hardly get in and out of the bed that I was like, I am staying in this because if I ruin it, I don't care. Um, and baby was doing good. He, he was very healthy coming out. Um, they were checking my blood pressure like once an hour, once every 30 minutes. It was, it got pretty frustrating. Um, as far as breastfeeding, I did try breastfeeding right away. Um, he, he latched fine, but it was like he was falling asleep as he was sucking. And so then he would just stop. Um, and then I was worried he wasn't getting enough. I was worried I wasn't producing enough of the, I'm going to mispronounce this. It's either colostrum or colostrum. One of the two don't hate on me. Um, and so I was worried that I wasn't producing enough. Um, so we did supplement a little bit with formula while we were in the hospital just to make sure that he isn't losing too much weight and that he is, you know, really staying on top of where his weight needs to be. Um, so I didn't even tell you, he was born at seven pounds, 11 ounces, 21 inches long, um, fairly big baby for almost two weeks early. So uh, my husband's a pretty big man. So that's, he gets it from him. <laughs> um, so he's done really well, or he did really well. Um, we gave him a bath. They have to wait, I believe it's 12 hours after birth. So that would have been like two o'clock in the morning. So we gave him a bath at like three or four o'clock in the morning. We weren't sleeping anyway. So our nurse came in and did the whole bath for us and really showed us, you know, everything. And it was very cool. And our nurse, hands down, the best nurse I could have ever had. Um, I, we still refer to her as if we're best friends with her. Like, oh, remember Michelle told us to do this? <laughs> so um, if you have a good nurse, be you know so grateful for that um so we this was a thursday evening that we got transferred over we stayed thursday night and friday night and we got discharged saturday morning so we stayed a total of three nights in the hospital because the first night they didn't start um, i just had to do fluids and wait till 6 a.m to start the pitocin um, so we did have to stay three nights that kind of stunk i only i was hoping for only two i'm a homebody i wanted to get home in my own home as quick as possible. Um, so we did, uh, we got to come home on Saturday and then once my milk supply came in, things really started moving um, and he started gaining from there. So it did take him um, a little bit of time to gain his weight back. Um, he lost an ounce between the time we left the hospital on Saturday and the time that we went to his pediatrician appointment on Monday. Um, and then from after that, that was Monday, by Thursday he had gained one ounce. So he was on the up and up from there once my milk supply came in and we were still exclusively breastfeeding. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to, oh, um, the most painful part of my labor and delivery was what I found out that I didn't know is my cervix was, and I don't know the positioning of everything, but I know that my cervix was like behind his head, it was like underneath and behind or something like that. Because when they started the Cytotech at first, it wasn't pushing him down any, it wasn't starting any contraction. Okay, baby woke up from a nap, now he's hungry, so I have to finish um, this very quickly. Um, so what I was saying is the Cytotech wasn't pushing him down any because my cervix was like really, really deep, I guess. It was very high up there. So the, the most pain painful part was the nurse had to pull my pull my cervix down. You're okay, baby. The nurse had to pull my cervix down um, to where his head would be pushing on it. Um, so that was pretty painful because I wasn't on any kind of you know pain medicine or anything for that. Uh, that was before they uh, even started. No, it started pitocin. That was before I had gotten the epidural. Um, I think even before my water had broken, I'm sure. Um, so that was the most painful part. But I now have a baby that I have to feed who is not very happy, are you? No. Um, so I'm going to end the video here. If you guys have any questions um, or if you, you know, have any video suggestions, let me know. Um, but if not, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.